I was lucky, and very, very lucky in Manchester. The wording is, um, the wording is bad towards the Irish. I think in a lot of the countries, if you were Irish, you were a traveller. Yeah. My love is rare. My love is pure. I saw a yeah. of that I'm sure. She smiles at me the so. She's with another man. Yeah, getting on for 30 years working in Salad with Travellers. So. Seen some changes. Well, I suppose sites are top of the list. I mean, when I first started working, I was only working with families who were on the roadside. They were basically getting evicted from place to place, and education was a gesture. We had mobile classrooms, kids would get a couple of hours here, a couple of hours there. It was basic outreach, basically building relationships with the local. Uh, with, with the families and um, you know getting them into school where and when we could but uh, it was it was transformed really when Southwark decided to build a significant number of travel sites how long have you been in Peckham Kathleen 24 years nearly and before that uh, on the side of the road moving here there and everywhere you were just getting dragged alive. So you were. And when we moved to Peckham, um, te well, I don't know about the teachers that time now, but a few people came down to see us for to get our children to school. They were like helpers. And we got the children to school. And that's what made me stay, with the children in getting education. Well, hello, this is the travel of group. I go around the world. Um, when I go to say Slovenia, they say you look just like a gypsy. Gosh, you're so much like a gypsy. And then when I come in places like this, they say Dr. Brian Belton, he's a lecturer at a college. You're nothing like a gypsy. Uh, I don't live in a caravan, so I'm told I'm not a gypsy. And certainly where nomadic cultures around the world come up against sedentary cultures, there's always friction. Is there a gypsy culture? Is there a traveller culture? This idea, oh, the traveller culture. Um, no, there is no one culture of travellers, or gypsies, or Romani. Uh, I'd say the traveller community is uh, one big extended family in Selluk, and uh, like any family, um, there are times when people get on like a house on fire, and other times when there are definite differences of opinion. Cantona um, come from a, a, a French uh, traveller background. This group of families live in caves in southern France for many years. Charlie Chaplin, so again, it's not, some of you might know, that this, uh, Charlie come from an English gypsy background. The Django Reinhardt, Elvis. The travel community is well known for being a community that uh, has high levels of, of health problems, um, lots more deaths of, of, of 
children and, and adults prematurely than you would expect. I think the travellers is always at the bottom of the pile. That's what I don't like with the government today, and that's in England and Ireland. They put them at the bottom of the pile. Why, I don't know. In the late 1980s, Southwark Council agreed a policy for the provision of official traveller sites in the borough. Today we can see how this vision has become a reality, with three official sites in Peckham and a fourth in Bermondsey, and no unofficial sites anywhere. Meanwhile, negative media coverage fuelled some local perceptions of travellers as being somehow less than human. We're not animals. Our children are definitely not animals. And they shouldn't treat us as animals. They try and shove us in places, and corners of places, and leave us there. What kills me as well, if one traveller makes a mistake, they blame us all. And they get, do a bit of whatever kind of trouble they get into. The whole, if there's a hundred travelling families on this road, they'll all get the one blame. But if that woman across that road in that circle house there, she gets into trouble and all the police comes to her door, they won't go next door. Why? But they'll go next door to me and they'll go next door again. Because I've had it. I've had it dragged down at half three or four o'clock in the morning. Or the caravan where we'd have a raid. Oh yes, I had my children dragged out half three, four o'clock in the morning with the police. And that's not going back on, that's only going back in the 1990s. So it was. As far back as anyone can remember, there's travellers in our family. Originally, our, our parents are from Ireland, but they've been living in Britain for 24 years. We lived all over Britain. We lived in Swansea, Manchester, Northern Ireland, Peterborough and Aylesbury. When we were in Manchester, we lived in a flat for seven years and we hated it. It was terrible, feeling cooked in by four walls. In the trail, there was windies all around and you were able to see out. We found that all the other house dwellers did not like us at all. They wouldn't speak to us when they did, they called us names. Now, you know, you're one of a handful of people who I believe were very active over the years here yes. campaigning for yes. you know, the protection or the formal establishment of your site. Exactly, right? exactly. And what was your experience of that campaigning? Well, it was a hard road because we were going to meetings for years and years and years and we met some of the MPs down there in the town hall, I can't remember the ones we met. But we were just going for years and years, I, I don't know. Why does other people have to do? Do the, does other people have to go as hard as the travelling people? Like I knew I was a traveller, um, but uh, how can I put it? You you don't advertise you're a traveller. We moved in here first. Believe it. We had petrol bombs thrown us. That is the truth. Because we had the police from here, CID down. Now. We had petrol bombs thrown in there, on top of us, we were about a week in here. On this site, because it's unofficial, we could be evicted at any moment. We have a plan to go on the council's official site. We haven't got a radio on the trailer, so when I want to listen to the radio, I'm going to meet Dad's wagon. My dad does tarmac and rubbish and bricklaying. Now that we won't be left on the side of the road, now that we have to stay, but most of the families wants to stay now anyway, again, for the education for the children. That's what's making a lot of travelling people stay because they would persevere and they would get out and go along the roads. But it's the education of the children and the children does need education. Believe me, they need education. We were here, I'd say for about 10 years, with just, Terrible port to lose, and one cow tap at the end of the street, at the end of the site, sorry. And we used to go to meetings, endless meetings, meetings for years and years and years. And then we finished up getting that unit out there with a shower, the bare basics, just the bare basics. I remember going to a meeting here in the town hall, and there was a lot of travellers there the same night, and 
I went over speaking to, I can't think of her name or whatever, and she's on about the travellers and whatever, and I let her yap away and whatever. Mm. I had a smile with her and a joke and that. And then I turned around and I says, well, I'm a traveller. Mm. And she said, what? I said, I'm a traveller. And I said, you didn't even know who you were speaking to or whatever. I said, and this is where I'm trying to make you understand that we've, we haven't got horns. Mm. That you didn't know, you could honestly say that you didn't know I was a traveller. So what difference did I, was I to the other travellers that you knew were travellers and you didn't know? She said, I don't know. Dave Cannon and Southwark Council's Traveller Education Support Service have worked with traveller families in the borough for 30 years, while traveller interests have also been represented by Southwark Travellers Action Group for over 20 years. Yeah, I'm the chair. Um, what can I say about Stag? Uh, we were very, very lucky to have Stag. And the truth of the matter is, only for this man, I don't think we would have. We had Paul, Pauline, mm -hmm. that done a lot of work with the travellers as well. And then we'd, um, there was a women's thing then, and the children would be took down to the seaside for the day and all things like that. Without Stag, we wouldn't have had that. Stag is based at Peckham Settlement, which helps prepare travellers for employment opportunities. Mary Joyce works at the settlement and is very positive about its role. Oh, it's good. It is. It's helping the travelling people, I think. So it is. There's all different yokes that goes on down there. Do you know what I'm saying? And you get like computer courses, so the travellers can go down and learn how to use the computer and all things like that. And do they? No. I haven't seen many now actually go down and use it. Shirley Joyce has been a youth development worker at STAG for four years. Her contribution is recognised as she takes her leave to have her first child. Yeah. That's all cat, cat. Yeah. You, have, you have your own language? I already speak of it. What do you like about school? Uh, right. 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 This is my brother-in-law and my double first cousin. They've just finished off making this wagon. They've took, I think, the whole summer just to do this wagon. And this is in 1955 when they finished when they finished the wagon. The loss of your culture must be very painful, particularly for you. It is. It is. I'd love to be able to go out there in the evening times and light a fire. I'd love to be able to go out and sit around the open fire. But where I was brought up from. I'd love that. But you can't do that. So you can't. You can't even tip the lion fire. Or you have the fire engines roaring. <laughs> but I miss all that. And I miss all the travellers down along the side of the road. My aunts and my uncles and all. But we've got them all here as well. But still, you miss all that. When you be out on the road, the fields was there and was absolutely gorgeous. The political reality is that travellers have in many ways been compelled to become part of the settled community. But society continues to marginalise travellers. It often fails to take account of their innate culture, to fully meet their legitimate needs, or to recognise their contribution to national life. And this is my mum and dad. We, uh, my grandfather, he, he fighted in the, uh, in the um, First World War. Traveller life has traditionally been about moving on, some of it enforced, some freely chosen. Today, Southwark's traveller community continues to make progress, to seize life opportunities, to gradually take their rightful place in society. A lot has been achieved, but there's still a great deal more to do. Ireland is the same as over here. There's no, they don't be allowed to travel. It's terrible when, you, when, when someone else can take your life away from you.